possibly the original uh, virus for the COVID uh, might have come from the bats to other animals to human beings. But it, it was our responsibility to stop it at the grassroots, which we failed. Hello and uh, good day. Today we're very glad or we're very uh, honored to have uh, Dr. Reza Khan with us. And he is a recognized uh, wildlife specialist in, in the Gulf. He is currently a wildlife specialist, principal wildlife specialist at the Dubai Safari. I'm really interested to know uh, your uh, your take on bats. You know, bats are known as vectors of all sorts of viral diseases, including MERS, SARS, Ebola, Merberg, and a host of others. And then, of course, the SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus responsible for COVID-19. There are proposals from people to do the nuclear option for bats. At the minimum, they're saying, why don't we just, if, if bats are so bad, why don't we just smoke them out of their caves or wherever they are? What are your thoughts about that? Thank you. <laughs> you, have got, you have asked me many questions regarding the bats. So let's just have a look at the bat world. We have bats are the only flying mammals that can virtually fly from any place to any other place. It's a long distance to short distance or just take up immediately like the birds do, like the butterflies do, like other insects do. So they are purely flying creatures in mammalian groups. Among the mammals, there are about 1400 species of bats and only rodents are more in number than the bats in the world. And bats are known to have evolved about 50 million years back. Homo sapiens are known to evolve about 300 years back. So bats are in the world many, many millions, a million years before human beings existed in the world. We have uh, landed into the domain of bats and other mammals, and we have created, as a Homo sapiens, we have created our own niche. In the process, we have destroyed many ecosystems, some of which were harboring all the wild bats and other wild creatures, wild plants, and they have been cornered in many parts of the world. Bats are carrying, and they are known as carriers of many diseases, but most of the time, we don't get infected from them as we don't come in contact with them. A few diseases might jump from bat to intermediate animals, like cats or carnivores, or certain smaller herbivores, like squirrels and monkeys, and it can be transferred to human being. So very few bats are direct, directly responsible for transmitting diseases from their own species to human beings. People, those who handle bats, I doubt they have ever been infected with, uh, uh, with any virus from the bats because they take the proper protocols the system that a bat handler is supposed to follow, they did all that and there is no incidence of being bat uh, biting a human being and getting infected from it. So these are accidental or when we are lack in our systems of management for the agriculture, for animal wealth, uh, for the human health and the general ecosystem of a country, of an area, of a restricted forest or a wildlife sanctuary. In other words, Dr. Khan, you're saying uh, the idea of exterminating bats in their natural habitat is not a very good idea. Absolutely not. Just imagine in Austin, Texas, where a couple of million bats live in a breeze called um, something like after the name of the MPs there. I have been there one time. They come out in the evening couple of million and they go to Mexico border, they each bat, each insect bat, a minimum of couple of thousand insects it must be eating every night. That includes mosquitoes and many species of moths and nocturnal beetles uh, and bugs which are active at night. 
So they are dependent on them. So they are feeding on them. They are cleaning our agricultural field of the pests. Death, and uh, we, we use less pesticide because of the bats. If you kill a bat population uh, of uh, one particular cave, you are not uh, exterminating the whole population. You cannot do that. Nobody in the world can exterminate any particular species of bat which occur in hundreds and thousands or in hundred thousands. So one population, and it is not logical because we do not know which particular species of bat is responsible for transmitting the disease. We should not be killing any species of bat or it, we should not be burning any population of bat, whether in a cave or any other place, because uh, it, it will outweigh the benefit that they are giving uh, to accidental uh, transfer of disease. Possibly the original uh, virus for the COVID uh, might have come from the bats to other animals to human beings. But it, it was our responsibility to stop it at the grassroots, which we failed. It is a failure of human society that we could not stop the spread of this disease or any other disease that is spreading from one particular population or a very small group of people to the whole world. And it's uh, taking the status of a pandemic. In the Middle East, uh, there was the, M the MERS, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, that erupted uh, some years ago. And uh, scientists, uh, scientific teams from different parts of the world have traced the MERS in camels and human beings. It killed something like 800, uh, more than 800 people and affected uh, at least 2,000. Uh, MERS was traced to bats. How many species are there of bats in the Arabian Peninsula? And, uh, and in the UAE, uh, how, many uh, how many species uh, are there that, that we know? Uh, that uh, very little studies have been done on the bats in the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, in the last uh, past 10, 15 years, uh, scientists from the European uh, continent, they have joined people in Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Oman, and UAE. They have done some work because it is a nocturnal animal and you don't see them. And it is difficult unless we uh, catch them by netting or you know, we entice them to their uh, sounds. We produce the sounds. and So it is difficult. It's not like birds or butterflies or mammals, which are uh, diurnal, or we could see them by day and which we could catch or trap in different ways. So that is the reason usually bats are least studied in most part of the world. Uh, but nowadays, because of these uh, diseases that is being uh, transferred by accident or by uh, other means uh, to human uh, beings, people are becoming conscious. As far as I know, uh, in the Arabian Peninsula, the number of bats could be anywhere between 50 and 55. If detailed studies are done, up to now, uh, 50, 52 species have been found in the Arabian Peninsula. Bat numbers are an indicator whether an ecological environment is safe for plants to grow. But bats, butterflies, and some insects, they are the agents for pollinating natural plants and some of the cultivated plants. So they are very, very beneficial in a place. So we need to do lots of study on them and find out which bats could be uh, carrying diseases or which, which could in the future uh, be a, uh, dangerous for the people. So if uh, long-term studies are done, if monitoring is, regular monitoring is done, then we could forecast. We can tell, yes, this migratory bat population is passing through you, you are from the Arabian Peninsula. This might be European people can tell us that these are the bat population from Central Asia or Europe are migrating through the uh, UAE and Arabian Peninsula. They might be carrying the following diseases. So we need to be careful. So we we can advise the people then please don't be in touch with the bats avoid them and if you are bound to touch them like the scientists do take the proper precautionary measures so that uh, no accident uh, takes place in the ue jackie jibbers and his team and uh, uh, team have found just 90 species of bats in the ue but definitely there is going to be more species as we continue our studies or uh, when government spends a uh, lot of time and effort in studying these uh, animals which could pose threat to human beings. So I think that needs to be concerted effort by all sectors uh, so that we pay more attention to the bats and find out whether 
they are how good they are for us and whether they could be bad for some bad for some people at any time where have you seen bat populations in the uae where do they hide or where surely bats most of the bats in arabian peninsula and uae they live in the uh, caves in the mountains because that is the most secure place for them where very rarely people go except the honey collectors people normally they don't go to the hills or the some of them who who collect firewood like in yemen and, and part of so there and maybe people are going for collecting firewood but it is usually the honey collectors they go so they lead a very safe life in uh, uh, mountain escapes also in old fort if there is a disused archaeological site bats could be living there so they try to live in places where normally people don't go some species like the small uh, insect bat they are very very small like like in the evening if you are standing like uh, uh, in jumeirah somewhere just before the sundown you might see a butterfly like creature flying in front of you and go at passing even you may not see them properly what it is so bat could be living in the cities also like the especially insect bats UAE has a fruit bat that lives usually in the mountain because they are frugivorous they feed on the uh, fruits they do come down to the foothills very rarely it has been sighted in the city limits uh, fru uh, fruit bats usually live in the completely in the mountain because most of the fruit trees and the orchards and agricultural fields um, pr producing uh, fruits are located in the Hazar mountains in the UAE and other part of Oman Hajj mountains would be in uh, Ras Al Khaimah. Yes, uh, we have a part in Dubai also, like Hatta. Uh, in Alain, you have Jebel Hatta. So from Ras Al Khaimah up to uh, Alain, all over you have the this uh, Hazard range of mountains. Some parts are in UAE and major parts are in Sultanate of Oman. Their population is too low. Actually. A very very low population we have because we don't have so many fruit gardens and naturally growing fruits except two species of figs that grow in the mountain. There will be very few other species of plants uh, in Hazard Mountains uh, that, on which fruit fruit bats can depend on. Would you recommend then, uh, Dr. Khan, that uh, more studies should be done about uh, the bat population in this region and the, so what sort of uh, benefits do they? Uh, do they have? Uh, what diseases do they carry? Uh, what threats uh, do they pose to people, for example? Um, yes, I think the basic studies is needed to identify first what species of bats we have. Then there should be continuous monitoring and study of the ecology and behavior uh, in the wild and some in captivity like uh, Sharjah Zoo can do, Dubai Safari, Alliance Zoo and other zoos that we have. Some of them could be keeping them and uh, do the studies uh, uh, in situ and in ex situ conditions um, so that uh, um, uh, government entities and members of the public are aware of whether a bat could be posing any danger or not at the current time or in future. But monitoring of the situation is very much needed for which uh, a government possibly uh, should uh, encourage private universities or the universities and other research organizations we have in the UAE uh, to be working with the bat species in the country and in the region. I will just request every member of the public that please don't be afraid of the bats. Bats are here, they are all the time here, we don't see them but they are doing a great job because every evening in Dubai Zoo, I, I lived inside the zoo, uh, every evening I'll be making a round and I'll see them flying over my head. And in, in the city, sometimes uh, people could be uh, uh, seeing them between the cracks of a building or where two walls join. So it could be just uh, half a centimeter. Throw that it will be able to pass. So they are so small in size and they could be living in the cracks and crevices in the cities and that every night they're destroying thousands of insects which would have otherwise created problem for us and it would have been a problem for this uh, civic bodies like our Dubai municipality and other municipalities in the region. So we need to be patient with the bats and um, our uh, uh, people, those who are working in the uh, health sector, uh, environment sector, we need to be doing lots of work with the bats and uh, popularize the bats, their benefits that they do and the uh, little bit of harmful aspects that it might have because it might be carrying some uh, virus and other uh, uh, diseases. It can be, uh, 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 it may not 
get infected itself, but it may be working as a carrier. So all those we could only determine by studying them in the field. So a study of bats is a necessity really for all, all the countries in the world. We need to do lots of studies and remove the misconception that is failing in the society about the bats. Can we say then that bats uh, should, people should be afraid of bats and they are our friends? Actually, we sh if somebody comes in contact with bat, they should never touch a bat their hand. Like they must not touch a snake when they see in the sea beach. So uh, we should not be touching because we have, most of us, most of the members of the public, we don't have any business with the wild animals. We enjoy their beauty. We love them. We take pictures of them. We don't touch them. This is the formula all people should be following. Unless we need, like in zoos and captive breeding center, in wildlife research center, nobody should be touching any wild animal, whether it is a small insect, whether it is a bat or a huge whale. So we should not be touching them unless we are needed and we have a purpose and that will serve the society. Thank you very much, Dr. Reza Khan, the wildlife specialist, principal wildlife specialist at the Dubai Safari. Thank you.